In old Japan, there was a belief that trees, once they reached a certain age, sometime after a thousand years, would come alive and become a spirit. This, this tree spirit could either be benevolent, mischievous, or downright wicked. It sometimes depended on who encountered these spirits as into uh, what nature that tree spirit would be. If they were a lost traveler, the tree spirit might be uh, merciful and help that traveler find his way. Or, if they were mischievous, they might change the paths and lead that traveler on and on. Now, if the, if the person was a woodcutter, then it was up to that tree spirit's di discretion as to how they would treat that person. Now, some centuries ago, there was once a woodcutter, a greedy woodcutter who did not like to share with others. He liked to save the best trees for himself. He laughed at the notion of tree spirits. And for one reason, he was one of those that spread those stories because he wanted to keep away other woodcutters. At one time, this woodcutter had decided to go out into the mountains to cut down a very large tree that he had saw before. This tree was extremely large and extremely old, and he, realized, and he knew that this tree would bring him much wealth if he brought it down by himself. So he set out early one morning before the crack of dawn, just himself and a pack of mules to help him cart the tree. He took with him his best and sharpest tools. He had hoped that with a bit of hard work he could have that tree down and back to his place before nightfall. When the woodcutter arrived in the mountains at this tree, he began cutting away, chopping, chopping, sawing and sawing. After a little while, he suddenly heard a voice saying, Get back, get back. I'm about to fall. Well, the woodcutter was alarmed, and he jumped back, and he looked around, but there was no one there. So he went back to chopping the tree again. A little while later, again he heard the voice, Get back, get back. I'm going to fall. And the woodcutter again stopped what he was doing and looked around to see if anyone else was out there. He began to think someone was out there playing tricks on him to keep him from finishing his task. And he went all the way around the area, but there was no one to be found. So he went back to work, chopping and chopping, hacking and sawing. And again the voice said, Stop! I'm going to fall! I'm going to fall! Get back! And the woodcutter again was startled by that voice. But this time he was determined not to stop. And he continued cutting and hacking and sawing. But by now, the sun was starting to set. And the tree was beginning to take on a new look. Eyes began to form along its branches. And mouths began to form on its trunk. It became hideous. However, the tree cutter did not, the wood cutter did not see it at first. He was too busy cutting the tree. He was so determined to get this tree down, he did not notice the tree's transformation until it was too late. By the time he looked up and saw the horrific shape that the tree was in, with its mere uh, dozens of eyes and gaping mouths, he let out one gasp, and then the tree swallowed him up, and he was never heard of again. However, the donkeys were safe. Uh, the, uh, the mules were able to get, uh, get free and were able to get back home. So they, uh, they, um, they fared far better than their master. <laughs>